have our final uh, speaker uh, this afternoon who has a very interesting perspective. Um, he is a clinician, but I think that his perspective is very intriguing because his, his story is from the patient, uh, which I think is unique. You know, oftentimes uh, when someone tells you that they are a physician, we often forget that physicians will be patients as well. So his story is, is interesting and... So uh, I, I want to tell you that um, I had planned on singing a song um, and uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger was going to chime in with me. Uh, but uh, Josh in the front row, <laughs> no, he decided he wouldn't. Can everybody hear me? Okay. Um, no, I, I, uh, I think that I'm very blessed to have you guys all still here with us uh, for sort of the last talk of the day before cocktails. And so I do appreciate that. I'll try to be somewhat entertaining maybe. Uh, I'm not sure why they stuck me in with this wonderful group. I'm in awe of the work that goes into uh, all this brainiac kind of uh, work that I've been experiencing. I'm, I'm in, in awe of the wow impact uh, of the conferences and the, and the uh, speakers that I've heard thus far. Mine, I don't think, has wow impact. I think I'm more like a case study. And so uh, I, I think we're, we're going to take it from all, all the out here to all the down, down low. So uh, uh, that, can you guys hear me? It sounds funny up here. But uh, anyway, I think that uh, you should, should need to know that my presentation is not high tech in any way, uh, except there's light projecting uh, on the screen. Uh, I learned how to Twitter yesterday, not tweet, how to tweet yesterday uh, on Twitter. And, um, but uh, the, the idea that I came up with through a personal story um, uh, is not high tech, but it may be world changing, maybe life changing. Um, it speaks to some basics of human dignity uh, and, and uh, some of the very basics of human dignity are, are your own self image, how you view yourself, and body odor. How about that? So uh, people sitting next to you, um, hopefully notwithstanding, you'll have a good, uh, good conference uh, or good, good discussion here. So let's see. Okay. So uh, I had a lightning bolt strike me in, in 2010, almost exactly four years ago. Uh, I'm a urologist, which is a plumber of sorts. Morgan Knight is sitting in the middle. I might have to explain a little bit about what that means. But I, I work with the waterworks in the body. Uh, I'm a surgeon. I was trained to uh, take things apart, put them back together again. And um, uh, you, you may have all heard or not heard about a substance called a PSA, which is prostate-specific antigen. It's received a lot of bad press lately, uh, indicating that it's probably not a great tool to find prostate cancer. But guess what? It found mine. Uh, I had uh, a PSA that went from 1.6 to 28 in one year. And I've had a number of patients of my patients ask me, so is this contagious? How, you take care of prostate cancer patients, right? How'd you get this? Well, you know, a, 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 an ophthalmologist can have an, an eye problem. A cardiologist can have a heart attack. A dentist can get a tooth abscess. I mean, I, I'm, I'm human, so can I get prostate cancer? Yeah, was I paying attention to it? I, I actually was. I had, I'm, I'm a believer in uh, using PSA, and, and my PSA suddenly was higher, and I was in trouble. Um, I uh, actually uh, reached out. Uh, to my partner to, to do biopsies. Um, then I reached out to my community uh, in, in Michigan. I'm from right about there in Michigan. Uh, and uh, my community suggested that uh, as, me as a surgeon, perhaps the best treatment was going to be surgery. Uh, but that, wasn't, that was thinking outside the box. The, the, the big uh, uh, typical thing that people have when they, they had illness like mine would be to have radiation therapy and chemotherapy. And being a surgeon, I didn't like that idea. Those things seemed like voodoo to me, so I decided that I wanted to have surgery. Discussed this with every person I could in the state and chose a couple of key people to advise me and figured out all, all things were pointing to a certain person at the University of Michigan to operate on me. So I used my community. We talked about uh, you know, your resources. Boy, if you've got community, you've got a lot. Um, so uh, the other thing about me, besides being a surgeon, is that I'm, I uh, fancy myself a bit of a musician. This is a guitar. I, since I had an illness, I, I, uh, I designed a bucket list. You never think of a bucket list until you get close to something that impacts your life like that. And one of the things I wanted to do was have those big speakers uh, alongside me. I'd taken some guitar lessons, and, and I, and I uh, got a keg of beer, and I had all my friends come. and, and uh, then I hired a good band to follow me, <laughs> and uh, they came and uh, and listened to me, and, and uh, 
they asked me to do it again the following year, which was a ball. Anyway, so um, I had my plumbing rerouted by, because of my bad, bad cancer, and now I wear an appliance bag on my side, on my belly. Uh, what that means is that your, your urinary system is supposed to convey urine out through a normal process, uh, and your stool goes out a different direction, of course. Uh, I had to have my bladder removed because of how bad my cancer was, and so I ended up with an ostomy on my side. Uh, this is uh, a picture that was uh, actually came across Facebook, and this is a very cute kid with an ostomy bag. Um, this was not for cancer. I understood that this was uh, uh, put on Facebook by uh, the Crohn's Ulcerative Colitis Support Group uh, as a Facebook entry asking for a thousand likes for this little guy. And so I don't know what benefit that uh, brings to this little guy, but I do know it benefits his family. It's sort of like generating community. And, and uh, when, you, when you have community that's pulling for you and, and tweeting you and Facebooking you and all that kind of stuff, it, it puts a little bit of a, a cushion underneath you. I had my church, my family, my partners, my nurses, uh, and, and your community just really helps buffer uh, hitting rock bottom. Uh, so, so hopefully uh, this little guy will get his thousand, thousand likes. And, and uh, I don't know that his family asked for that. I don't know how he got into that certain spot. And I actually had to bot out his eyes because if that was me, I don't know if I'd want to see everybody see my belly. But, uh, but, this, but this little guy, uh, it, it shows how important illnesses are and how important it is to develop a community. I think it's frankly sad, you guys might disagree with me, but it's frankly sad, although I've seen some connect, connectivity with, with Twitter and things like that around here, if your only community is electronic. I, I think that's, that's, a, that's a hard situation to live in because I don't think electronics hug you very well. Um, this is what ostomies look like. Ostomies are not normal. Uh, people with ostomies don't feel confident. They avoid intimacy. Uh, they worry about leaks from their plastic bags. Well, the, plastic, the, the, comp, uh, the companies that make these plastic compliance bags are awesome. Uh, I saw a picture of a, a kid in Africa that had an ostomy and he had a uh, tuna fish can taped over with duct tape around his waist to his ostomy. So, at least we, if in our developed country, we don't have to do that with tuna fish cans. At least may, maybe there's some people in our community that may have to. But uh, th they have these bags that are available, and the bags really serve a purpose. They, they, they collect whatever's conveyed to the outside. But they're not perfect. Um, and because they're not perfect, people with ostomies worry. Uh, they're not as confident as they had been before. Their life image, their body image has changed. And here it comes, the biggest problem that I view of it is that there's an odor. Now, just like the little boy that I showed in the last slide, interestingly, um, I've, I've had four kids. I'm not a great diaper changer. My kids are all older now, and I, and I really don't look forward to their kids uh, having to have their diapers changed. But anybody that's in here that's old enough that has changed a diaper knows what a poopy diaper smells like. And, and generally, it smells like this. You give it to your, to your spouse, right? And, and so that, that poor little kid, that poor little guy with that ostomy is going to, uh, you know, as a toddler, maybe pull the bag off. He's going to have wardrobe malfunctions. He's going to have leaks. Uh, you know, when he, when he gets to be uh, in middle school, he may be bullied. When he gets to be a teenager, uh, you know, he may not be able to play a sport that he'd like to play because of it. When he, when he tries to date, he may, have, he may worry about his confidence level, that he may, not, may have a hard time approaching a girl. Uh, you know, and, and a lot of it goes into the parenting and the community that surrounds him. Maybe not. Maybe, maybe this little guy will, will do okay. But uh, I was in this position. I was looking in the mirror into my eyeballs, which if you've never done it, it's an interesting experience. Look in your eyes, because the eyes don't change unless you've had some kind of eye surgery. But your body image may change, and your, and your perception of yourself may change. But in that perception change, the question is whether you can do something about it. Problems with ostomy appliances, they're plastic appliance bags that cause perspiration, bacterial and yeast growth underneath. It's just a pla it's like strapping a zip ziplock to your side, filling it up with something and having it hanging there. You know, in this uh, California climate, it would get pretty sweaty underneath, and then the next thing you know, you got yeast and bacterial growth. They get real, real itchy, they're not fun to have. Um, this le leads to skin breakdown. The bag makes a scrunchy sound, so people are afraid to hug you. If they know you've got it, they're afraid something bad might happen if they hug you. Uh, the contents are visible if you're trying to work out in the gym or if you're getting un undressed in the doctor's lounge like I do. Uh, you know, the thing is hanging out. It doesn't look very good. The contents are wet and odorous. Now, my wife tells me that she could never smell my ostomy, and she's 
she's my you know wonderful support group. But uh, I knew that when I wafted the blankets up in the middle of the night, it was either my feet or my ostomy. I could smell something, and and that uh, just didn't smell uh, like I used to smell. And uh, I could try to blame my wife, and she always said it wasn't her fault. But but uh, I, I'm pretty sure that my ostomy didn't smell perfect, even though I had this wonderful collection bag. So um, the MacGyver principle, for those, anybody remember MacGyver? <laughs> you know, this is from the three-channel TV days, right? Um, uh, Mac MacGyver uh, he was an inventor, and they, he always, the TV show always got him into odd situations where he'd have to make something out of something on the ground or build something out of paper clip in his pocket to get out of difficult situations. Well, I think, uh, you know, the MacGyver principle, and everybody's heard the rest of this, necessity is the mother of invention. Um, that led me down a path of, of uh, finding out who my community was and, how, and what can I do better. So my team initially uh, included my wife, my wife again being my biggest cheerleader. Uh, hopefully she feels that I'm her biggest cheerleader. Um, she started looking online for, for uh, appliance bag covers. So there are companies out there that take material and sew them into a shape that fits on the outside of your plastic bag. So it, it masks its appearance. It may feel more comfortable than the plastic that you've got wearing on your side. We ordered a couple of them, <clears throat> and they were stiff. <clears throat> they weren't designed appropriately for, for my specific uh, body habitus or bag. So, so I wasn't real happy with them. I didn't think they were great. They didn't really feel like underwear. They felt like, uh, like cardboard. Um, but she was working on it, and she knew that I was kind of down in the dumps, and I was a very active person prior. I was very uh, busy, had an active outdoor life, uh, I, I, an active surgeon, uh, got a, uh, you know, a, wonder, a very wonderful life, very blessed, but not feeling quite so at that time. Uh, I had a nurse at the time who, uh, whose husband was a patient of mine, and he had a similar urologic problem in that he had tubes draining out and, and the tubes were odorous and she happened to be brainstorming with me and said, you know, there's got to be something better. How can we avoid the, the, the smell of my husband and how can, how can we help you at the same time? That, that was me. I had partners uh, uh, that we assembled. I, uh, Brian Stork in the audience is one of my partners and we formed a team called Med5 and, and I don't know why we called it Med5 except there were originally five people and it was some, something medically related. Um, and, and, you know, when you try to come up with a name of a corporation, you have to search to make sure you're not copying somebody. But anyway, we came up with this idea. And uh, uh, we, we, the group included very important key people. We had a marketer because we thought maybe this is something we're, you know, we're going to make it for me, but maybe we need to try to figure out how to make it for other people. Uh, we had a, a, uh, somebody who was sort of in um, uh, the business of, of publication or presentation or marketing. Uh, we, had, we had to have a guy... <laughs> Brian, who's uh, much more techno savvy than me, and if you want to, if you want to tweet anybody about all the stuff, go to uh, Stork Brian at uh, at Stork Brian or something like that. I guess it's called. You can ask him. He's laughing in the third row here. Um, but uh, we were we also uh, in Muskegon, that where we're from is a, is a blue collar manufacturing town, uh, and and I happen to have a very close friend who uh, uh, was in the textile business, clothing business, and he made clothes for hunters which I was one of. I'm a bow hunter, and if, you, if any of you uh, understand the, the practice of bow hunting, it's doing something very primitive to try to kill an animal for the purpose of eating it. Uh, that, I mean, there are other reasons people hunt, but that's the reason I do it is to try to do a, fork to, uh, a field to fork mentality, and, and there's a lot about that now instead of going and purchasing a, a steak at the store and you know, understanding the whole process of getting where the meat is coming from and how to get it to the table. Anyway, um, he made clothes that were carbon impregnated and activated carbon, which is charged by energizing it in the dryer, just heating it up, uh, makes it so that it's thirsty for molecules that are charged. And many odor molecules uh, that the body produces or that are produced in the urine or in stool are charged particles that will stick to carbon. Okay, it's like ammonia in your fish tank gets stuck to charcoal in the back of your back, of, you know, you have to throw the charcoal away after a while. Well, this activated carbon in these clothes can be reactivated by just putting it in the dryer. And, it, and typically the clothes last with a charge every two weeks. I mean, it only has to be recharged every two weeks. Well, I asked him, can we make a bag? I was, uh, I was actually getting ready to go on a bear hunt in Idaho with my two sons. And bears have a long snout. Why do they have a long snout? Well, they're not 
they, they have a long snout to smell things. They have a wonderful olfactory system to find food and to avoid their own dangers uh, and to find each other probably. Well, I was going on a bear hunt and I had to get to within 30 yards of it with, a bow, with my bow hunting experience and I was worried about, whoo, you know, what am I gonna do? Let's build a bag. So I talked to this guy, he helped me build a bag and uh, this is sort of a schematic of what it looks like. If there's uh, odors that are coming from below, they go up into this um, uh, polyester fabric layer that has carbon stuck to it. And, uh, and so uh, uh, many of the odor molecules don't quite get outside, and so it doesn't completely eliminate odor, but it cuts down on it. The other benefit that we had with this material that I didn't quite realize is that polyester in, its, in certain uh, weaves is a, is a moisture wicking, uh, has a moisture wicking property. So it would take away uh, not, only, not only the uh, moisture of perspiration under the bag, but also small leaks, which is awesome. Uh, in addition they, uh, to, our, to the uh, carbonation of this material, uh, they attach an indelible antimicrobial, so that would be, in our instance, also helpful at preventing yeast and uh, bacterial infections. This is what it looks like. So uh, this patient has an ostomy, um, it's a bag that doesn't look all that great. Um, this is our ostomy appliance over it, and that's neatly tucked into uh, the underwear. Now, uh, uh, it, this is a, t a woman named Tyla Syke, uh, who uh, I have to give a lot of credit to. Uh, she lives in the United Kingdom, and uh, before I tell you about her, I want to tell you about a funny story. I was at a meeting where I was presenting like this, and uh, everybody you could tell in the, in the audience was semi feeling sorry for me, which is a wonderful thing because I got this wonderful, terrible ostomy. The patient came out of the thing after I talked and he said, you know, my wife would really connect with you. I said, well, cool, that, that's neat, why? He said, well, she had uh, colon surgery for Crohn's disease and now has a colostomy. And I said, well, that's, that's wonderful. I said, uh, she could probably use a stoma cloak. And he said, oh no, she doesn't hunt. <laughs> And so I thought, well, you know, you didn't get it. This, this is not for hunting, this is for daily living. So Thyla gets it. Uh, Thyla gets it, and, and uh, so she uh, has a show called Osto Mondays on YouTube, and, and she is a United Kingdom woman, and so she has a wonderful accent, and, uh, and she's very cute as well. And so she, she presents things in a wonderful way, and she, uh, she actually saw our product, bought one, and said, hey, do you guys want a video? And we said, yeah. So uh, this is the video. If I adjust it to fit around your bag, um, and then once it's up, you just fold it back again, and then it's just nice and neat and uh, tucked away, and, and it's done. Sorry about the volume. So, um, we, oh, I'm sorry, Oops, how do I advance it now? There we go. So, uh, does it work? Well, we have three studies or three situations going on right now that we think are proofs for us. And, and uh, just to run through them quickly, there's more about each one of these. Right? The, these bomb sniffing dogs are going to be, they're going to blow you away. Uh, they're the best part of my presentation. We're doing a veteran study in Ann Arbor, Michigan right now on veterans returning from Iraq that have ostomies. And uh, we're just giving them bags to see if their life, if they can, sh uh, that we can rep show a quality of life improvement. And then we have a lot of testimonies. So this this is uh, Dr. Fabio Grizzi in Italy. Uh, my partner ran into uh, uh, at the American Neurologic Association, and he has a dog uh, named Lou that uh, is trained to smell urine or detect something from prostate cancer in patients with urine, uh, uh, with prostate cancer in their urine. So there's some volatile substance that comes out of the urine in patients with prostate cancer these dogs can find. And so this is, this is just a, uh, showing this, this, this dog, each one of these containers has a fluid in it. And the dog found the one with, with prostate cancer. So, so this one, again, these, these containers each have urine specimens in them, and that third specimen, again, has uh, urine from a prostate cancer patient. And, uh, and the dog, we, we've covered it now with a stomach cloak material. And the dog doesn't detect it. They take them around two or three times, and, and uh, it's, it's a wonderful, we don't know exactly what the substance is, and they were happy to have 
uh, our, our thing because they, they think that the stomacoke material that was uh, in that uh, container is masking something or is, is absorbing something, but it's going to help them in the process of identifying what that substance is. Um, so I, I'm not going to go over these testimonies with you, but, or, uh, but I, I want to just tell you that we have loads of testimony about uh, how wonderful this thing is. And, and uh, we have, I have two specific stories, uh, and again, I have three pages of these testimonies just on, on these slides. But I had a 16-year-old that uh, had a colostomy for Crohn's disease send us a letter back. Uh, actually, his mother sent it. And he was trying to go to the prom. He had a new colostomy. Couldn't figure out how to get the gumption up to ask a girl to date him. And uh, he, he, his mother got one of our stomach cloaks online, bought it, he put it on, and he wouldn't give it up. And he asked a girl and went to the dance. Uh, and, and so we have so many stories like that that are, are just incredible because uh, they, they're allowing mainstreaming of patients. They're allowing people with ostomies with a, with a, a disability of sorts to, to be mainstreamed. Uh, this, this, if it's any evidence, if popularity is any evidence of success, uh, this is our sales line over the last uh, two years, and, and we see a nice trend up, uh, upward. Um, and, and so uh, we have patient satisfaction, comfort, health, decreased overall cost of bag use, because if you, if you use this appliance, uh, this uh, stoma cover over the appliance, the bag lasts longer, so patients can, you know, especially people on fixed income that only get four bags a month, which is what some insurance company decided for them, then, then they can make them last longer. So in summary, uh, the irony of me a urologist contracting an illness that I was used to taking care of uh, is, is uh, the, the, twisting, the twisted irony of this that I got prostate cancer and had to have therapy, surgery that I, uh, that I uh, do for other patients. I found myself in a position of need. My community arose to the, to the uh, issues and uh, we're touching many lives. So I, we made uh, lemonade from lemons.